Hi B. Hi Benjamin. My name is Peter and I'm a Master of Public Policy student at the University of Toronto. I really enjoyed your book and I have two questions. First of all, how do we get from where we are today to the vision outlined in your book? That is, how do we really overcome these moral hazard issues and really create ethical and equitable algorithmic decision making? I'm especially concerned by the fact that different provinces and different levels of government are likely to adopt different models that may create really inconsistent levels of service. My next question relates to the federal government's recent announcement of $2.4 billion towards securing Canada's AI advantage. What do you make of this announcement, and do you think it has the right level of funding, specificity, and detail to really make sure that Canada secures a legal advantage as well? Thank you so much. Hi, Peter. Thanks for your wonderful questions, uh, Abdi here. Um, I know Ben, my co-author, and I were really excited to see just the wonderful response we've been getting from students. You know, students are going to have to navigate this complicated feature that we're outlining, but students like yourselves, you know, graduate students in subjects like public policy are going to have to come up with the programs and the rules and the principles that are going to get us somewhere safe. And so I thank you for already diving in and I'm especially touched that you uh, took our book as a starting point. So thank you so much. You asked two really good questions. So I wanna take them in turn. Your first question is, how do we get from where we are today to the future that we're outlining in the book? And you're concerned about things like moral hazard, about the risk of inequitable algorithmic decision-making and about the variation between provinces that could lead to some inconsistent outcomes. So I share all those concerns. And I want to say there's three things that I think get us to the safer future that we're outlining. So one is uh, an idea that we're already sort of far down the path on, which is that we're going to need some integrated, comprehensive federal legislation. Right now, we have the AI and Data Act sort of percolating through Parliament um, as part of Bill C-27. That is the right regulatory approach. It recognizes that it recognizes that it's going to have to be the federal government because it has convenient coordinating power because people are mobile because data is mobile and because the issue of uh, technological fairness, equity, responsible tech development is not one that is really confined within provincial borders. So it's going to have to be federal. The problem of course, with the AI and data act as it currently stands is that there's not a ton of meat on the bones. There's some reasons for that, of course, which is the government can't hope to predict everything that's going to come in the future with te technologically. So it needs to have, uh, some responsive, adaptive principles, but it also needs some more legal content so that it creates some predictability for the marketplace. And so that it reassures the public about exactly how uh, these complicated and somewhat risky technologies are going to be uh, treated. So you're going to need some federal uh, legislation, whether uh, the legislation that we have right now in development is good enough remains to be seen. I have my concerns about it, but it is definitely one of the right places to be anchoring right now. The second thing that you're going to need is a, I want to say an, an emergent cultural understanding of the virtues of effective and responsible AI in the private sector. So I like to draw a comparison to privacy law. If we relied on law to assure us about uh, whether or not our data is being properly stewarded or whether or not we're uh, going to be properly protected in a technologized age, we wouldn't be satisfied, right? The law is just a set of minimum dictates in that world. It's actually the privacy policies, the best practices of industry, which give us some semblance of assurance. So in many ways, industry reached beyond what the law required of them because they recognize as a market advantage or a reputational advantage to giving people good privacy protection. What we need is to really, really popularize the notion of ethical AI such that it becomes a, an independent prerogative or independently independently incentivizes the private sector developers to aspire to it, right? And so that, I think, happens less through law and more through us becoming a sort of sophisticated public about what constitutes good AI or bad AI. That's going to be a component part of it. Now, sort of to get really into the meat of it, the thing that we're going to need is for our institutions not to just react to new AI developments, but to actually reformulate and reconstitute themselves in anticipation of this AI feature. What do I mean by that? Well, think about courts, for example, or think about administrative agencies and government. The way that they're embracing AI right now is either 
you know, they're rejecting it altogether, or they're figuring out ways to layer it atop of existing practices. The truth of the matter is that's sometimes risky because it could upend traditional, traditional practices, or you could not be getting the most out of the AI because you're trying to fit a square peg into a round hole, so to speak. But if we look at our institutions and say, how do we reformulate them to accommodate the coming future, right? How do we rethink the way that they're structured, the way decisions are made, the way hierarchies operate, the way that we do our work day to day to accommodate the social fact of increased AI use? Then maybe we have a better chance of sort of a harmonious uh, uh, division of labor, so to speak. And so what I think is we need to sort of radically reimagine our institutions so they can accommodate our technologized future. Those are all the bare minimum that we need to do before we can properly think through where we're going to be in 10, 15, 20 years. Why? Because if we don't do the work of you know, the, making the cultural shift, rethinking our institutions, having meaningful federal legislation to sort of police the arena. If we don't have that, then we're going to stumble our way to somewhere that might not be good. And so I think if we just focus on those three things in the short term, we'll be in a good place. You also asked a really wonderful topical question about the federal government's $2.4 billion investment in AI, whether it's a good thing, what we think about the, the sufficiency of it, is it enough money? My view is that it's a good start. It's a good start. Why? Because it's focused in two areas that the government ought to be focusing on. One is AI safety, right? I'm hearing about some money being committed to an AI safety institute. That's a good thing. That's a signal from the federal government that it's thinking about equitable, fair, transparent development of AI technologies, and that it's willing to produce research and create frameworks to ensure that that remains a possibility. So that's good news. Um, and the government has an advantage here because, you know, they can, they have massive convening power, right? And so they ought to be thinking about AI safety in a really concerted way. That's a good thing. The other is that it seems to me a lot of the money is going to be committed to allowing companies to access technical infrastructure and computing power. That's also good news because what you want to do is create infrastructure that uh, companies can develop on top of, that subsidize some of their, um, you know, electrical and plumbing costs, so to speak. That's, I think, a, a positive development. There are a lot of questions. One major question is, how are these resources going to be properly accessed? Um, that's going to, of course, be elaborated on as time goes on and as we get more information. The other question is, is it enough money? I mean, $2.4 billion is actually less then a lot of companies are investing in AI. In fact, I was reading recently that one major technology company is investing similar amount of money in digital infrastructure in Malaysia and Indonesia. And that's a company investing in a country, right? And so I do wonder if the, the dollars are enough in an absolute sense, because what you really do need right now is massive stimulus, because even though Canada is an intellectual leader, in AI. We don't have a ton of companies that have scaled significantly, and we also don't have um, a solid plan for how to keep those companies domestic, so to speak. Um, and so query whether the money's enough. The last component of it, I think, is a important one, which is, is this going to be too thought out too early? What do I mean by that? AI is developing so rapidly that you can't really hope to predict what the environment's going to look like in a year from now. And so if you're developing a large federal program or fund or investment plan, is it going to be flexible enough, responsive enough to changing developments on the ground? And the federal government is not always lauded for being fast and nimble, but this is an area where you have no choice but to be fast and nimble. And so are we going to overthink it? over-specify what the program is going to look like too early, or are we going to um, administer it in a way that's flexible as is needed? So fantastic questions. Maybe you'll be the one figuring this stuff out. Thank you again.